or we're going to start the topic of solving quadratic equations. Now remember a quadratic equation. Quadratic means that the highest power is 2. Now here we're talking about polynomials. Uh, so polynomials where the highest power is 2, where the highest degree is 2, uh, to be a little bit more specific. So when we're solving quadratic equations, there's several different methods that we're going to learn uh, on how to solve them, and we're going to try them one at a time. The first thing we're going to take a look at is something called extracting the root. So this is probably the easiest method for solving quadratic equations. The problem is this doesn't work on every quadratic equation. Uh, this only works if you have something squared and everything else is numbers. Okay, but if you're in the case where you just have a quantity, whatever that quantity is being squared and everything else in the problem is just numbers, then this will work. So let's start out with a very easy one. Now our directions for all of these, since we're uh, dealing with equations, is just going to be solved. Let's start out with something like x squared uh, minus 9 is equal to 0. Alright, so anytime we're solving equations, there should be steps here on how to help us solve it. So we're talking about quadratic equations, and we want to extract the root. So are we allowed to extract the root in this problem? Well, let's see, we do have something squared, and everything else is numbers, so we can extract the root. So if we can extract the root, then these are the steps we want to follow. Step one, isolate the thing being squared. Step two, take the square root of both sides. Now I'm going to put a quick little note right here, and we'll see where this comes from in just a second. Uh, don't forget the plus or minus. We'll see what that is in just a second. Uh, then once we take the square root of both sides, there still may be a little work left. So I'm just going to go ahead and say solve again, which means it's no longer going to be a quadratic equation. It may be something else. Okay, so we've decided we can extract the root here. So let's see if our steps work. Uh, first thing we're going to do is isolate the thing being squared. So I need to move that 9 to the other side. So I get x squared is equal to 9. Now for this very first example, I'm actually going to write all these steps here in the middle that most of the time textbooks and teachers will skip. But I want to show you where this plus or minus thing actually comes from. So the next step says take the square root of both sides. Now notice here I don't have a plus or minus yet. That's going to come in just a few steps from now. So when we take the square root of both sides, you need to remember your uh, roots and radicals section. When you take the even root of something to the same even power, that's actually the absolute value. And the square root of 9 is 3. This is the step that most textbooks don't bother to put in, uh, unfortunately. Now since we've solved absolute value equations in the past, we know the answers to this are a positive 3 and a negative 3, which we can combine and just write as... Uh, a positive and negative 3, hence the plus or minus piece. So the plus or minus doesn't actually come from the radical directly, it actually comes from an absolute value that we almost never write. So I'm actually going to skip this step too, and you probably should for the future just for time's sake because this is always going to work. So let's take a look at the exact same problem and write it how we most of the time are going to write it, uh, how it's going to work out normally. So let's see, we can't extract the root here because we have something squared and everything else is numbers, so we're going to do the same thing, follow our steps, so we get x squared is equal to 9. Now here's the way that we normally write it. We know what the next step, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Now of course the square root is to get rid of the square, so we're just going to write that as an x. Now when I take the square root of the other side, we're kind of going to combine all of this into one stepage. We're going to say that that is a plus or minus, because we know we're going to get both from the absolute value, and then the square root of that side. Now once we institute a radical into a problem, you always want to simplify it as soon as possible, so we get x is plus or minus 3. 
All right. All right, so let's uh, let's go through and try a couple more here. Let's get all this out of my way. So we're still solving. So let's see if we had uh, 4x squared <coughs> minus uh, 20. All right, uh, this is a quadratic equation because it's a polynomial where the highest power is 2. Uh, we want to extract the root. So can we extract the root? Well, let's see. I have something squared. Everything else is numbers. So my steps over here should work. So step one says isolate the thing being squared. So I need to get the x squared on the side all by itself. So I have 4x squared is equal to 20. And I need to divide both sides by 4 to get that by itself. So I have x squared is equal to 5. Now we're going to actually extract the root. We're going to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus, square root of 5. As soon as you put a radical into a problem, you want to simplify it uh, as soon as you can. Well, we can't simplify the square root of 5, so there we go. Uh, our answer is x is equal to plus or minus uh, uh, square root of 5. Oh, let's do maybe one more of these. What if I had something like uh, 2x minus 3 squared plus 4 is equal to 0. <clears throat> All right, so first off, uh, this is a quadratic equation. Now, to really tell that it was quadratic, technically what you'd have to do is distribute everything out. But we can kind of look into the future a little bit here and say, if I were to distribute all this out, the highest power would be 2, and it'll be a polynomial, so it's a quadratic equation. So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to extract the root. But remember, we can only extract the root if we have something squared and everything else is numbers. Now this whole thing now is our something. So it's something squared, everything else is numbers. So we should be able to extract the root. So let's uh, follow our steps. Isolate the thing being squared. So I want that on the side all by itself. So I have 2x minus 3 squared is equal to negative 4. Then we take the square root of both sides. Now remember, that's to get rid of the square root. So on this side, I just have 2x minus 3 plus or minus square root of negative 4. Don't forget that plus or minus. Now, as soon as we put a radical into a problem, we want to simplify that. Uh, I can simplify that to plus or minus, let's see, we have a negative and a radical, so that's uh, in a square root, so that gives me an i, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2i. Now notice, we still haven't solved for x, but now this is just a linear equation. So we want to get the x on the side all by itself. So we're going to add 3 to both sides. Now don't write this down yet. I'm going to write something and I'm going to change it. Technically, we could write it like this. We go plus or minus 2i plus 3. Technically, that's 100% correct, but you're never going to see it written like that. Anytime we're adding or subtracting a value, uh, to something that already has a plus or minus, we always write it out front. Uh, I'm not sure why, but you're always going to see it written like that instead. All right, so the last step here, we need to divide both sides by 2. So I divide both sides by 2. So I get x is equal to 3 plus or minus 2i over 2. Now, if you look in the back of the book, the answer might look like this, or remember from our section on complex numbers, that this isn't quite in the form that we're supposed to put it. We're supposed to have it in the a plus bi, or plus or minus bi form, right? So you might also see it written like this, 3 halves plus or minus 2i over 2, which would be 3 halves plus or minus i. So uh, depending on how the book leaves it, the answer it could leave it in either one of these two forms. So extracting the root is a very easy method, but unfortunately it doesn't always work. You have to have something squared and a number. All right, so let's uh, get that out of here. Get all this out, let's get ourselves some room. Let's take a look at the next easiest method for solving quadratic equations. So let's see. Okay, so notice here I said uh, we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring, but technically this works for all polynomials, and we'll, do, we'll even do an example one where the 
the degrees higher than two to show that this still works. Uh, factoring is going to be our next easiest way to solve a quadratic uh, <coughs> equation. But to use this, we need a theorem, uh, an idea. And here's what it says. This goes by a bunch of different names. I really don't care that you know what the name of this is. But it says if you have a times b equaling 0, then a is equal to 0 and or b is equal to 0. Now this goes by a couple different names. Sometimes it's called the zero factor property or the zero product principle or a whole bunch of names. Don't care that you know the name, but you do need to understand the concept. Here's what it says. This is all that it says. It says if you multiply stuff together and the answer is zero, one of those things had to be a zero, right? Think about it. Can you multiply any two numbers together and get an answer of zero without that number being a zero? No, right? One of them has to be a zero to get a zero as a result. Uh, that's kind of special for zero, right? It doesn't work for any other number like six. If I multiply two numbers together and the answer is six, does that mean one of those numbers had to be a six? Uh, no, not necessarily, right? So zero is special in this case, and this is what we're going to use to help us solve uh, by factoring. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ourselves some steps over here. Uh, step one. Clear any grouping symbols. Step two. Move uh, everything to one side. Step three, factor. Now, as far as what our steps are doing here, so you can kind of get the idea, our first three steps over there to get us into a situation like this, clear all grouping symbols, move everything to one side, which means we have a zero on the other side, and then factor. Remember, factoring is making things joined by multiplication. So the first three steps are to get us to this case up here. Now, once we're in here, we can use this idea that one of those factors has to be equal to zero. So we can use that to help us solve. We're gonna take a more complicated equation and break it into smaller, simpler equations. So we're gonna set each factor equal to zero and solve. Okay, again, here our directions are still just solved. All right, so uh, let's just try a few of these. Let's say if we have something like uh, all right, so if we were to classify this, is what you always want to do first is say, well, this is a polynomial equation. Since the power, highest power is 2, this is technically a quadratic equation. Uh, so the first thing we want to try is extracting the root. However, we have something squared, but not everything else is numbers, so we can't extract the root. So maybe factoring is going to work. So following our factoring step, step one says clear grouping symbols. That's done. Move everything to one side. Now, it technically it doesn't matter which side you move everything to, but since we generally learn how to factor with the lead coefficient being positive, you generally want to move everything to the side that keeps the lead coefficient positive. It'll just make your life a little bit easier. Now we can factor. Now you're going to go through all your steps for factoring. I'm just going to kind of jump to this rather quick for time's sake. Uh, two things that multiply to give me a negative 6 but add up to be uh, positive 1 would be uh, 3 and negative 2. So there's our first three steps. Now notice we have things multiplied together equaling 0, which is our case right here which means one of those two factors has to be equal to zero. So either x plus three has to be a zero or x minus two has to be equal to zero. Notice we took one equation, one complicated equation, and broke it into two easier equations to solve. And I'm gonna solve these really quick. And we get x is equal to negative three and x is equal to positive two. So here we have two solutions to this, which you'll notice for all your quadratic equations, you should get two solutions. All right, let's, uh, let's try another one here. Let's, uh, let's do the one we just did a second ago. What if we have uh, x squared minus nine is equal to zero? Now, uh, if we were going through our steps for this, we would classify this as a polynomial equation. More specifically, it's a quadratic because the highest power is two. Uh, the first thing we want to do is extract the root, which we can do. We saw we could extract the root, but here we'll show you that now that we have uh, more techniques, you have more options. Now this, uh, we can actually try to factor. So we clear our grouping symbols, which is done. 
Everything's already moved to one side, and this will factor, right? That's the difference of squares. Now that it's factored, here we have two things multiplied together equal zero. One of those factors has to be a zero. So we get x minus three is equal to zero. Again, solving really quick, we get our two answers. Now notice that was nice, quick, and easy also. So see, factoring is a, a, the next quickest way to solve these. All right, uh, going back this way just to give us a little bit more room. Let's say that we have, um, Okay, we're told to solve this, and like always, the very first thing we want to do is classify this. Well, it's a polynomial equation because all the powers are whole numbers, but what, uh, what is the highest power? Again, you got to kind of look into the future. Now, step one says clear grouping symbols, so imagine if I were to clear grouping symbols, what would the highest power be? Well, if you think about it, if you start distributing, you'd have an x squared, an x, another x, and a number. So the highest power is x squared, so this is quadratic. Now, <clears throat> notice we can't extract the root because we don't have anything just sitting there squared. So that doesn't work. So maybe factoring. If we start following our steps for factoring, we clear grouping symbols, move everything to one side, and factor. Now remember, those first three steps are to get us to where we have things multiplied together equaling zero. But notice what we start out with here. We start out with things multiplied together equaling zero. So they're back over here to our steps. I'm gonna put a, a star next to step one. If you start with things multiplied together equaling zero, skip to Step four. So if you already start out with, uh, spelled equaling wrong over there, I think. Uh, if you uh, start out with things multiplied together equaling zero, then all you gotta do is just set each factor equal to zero. So here we have something like x plus three is equal to zero, two x minus one is equal to zero. That one's really easy to solve. We get x is negative three. Let's see, let's do a little work over here. So we have two x is equal to one. So we have x is equal to one half. All right, nice, quick, and easy. So this is kind of the best case scenario that you're going to run into. All right, let's still go through here and take a look at some more. Let's say we have something like, uh, I don't know, x minus two, x plus three is equal to six. All right, again, uh, we have to classify this. We kind of look at this and you say, if I were to multiply this out, it would be a polynomial equation. And of course it would be a quadratic because the highest power would be two. We can't extract the root because we don't have anything squared. So we want to factor this. So step one says clear grouping symbols. Now, did we start out with things multiplied together equaling zero? No, they're equaling six. Now, one of the most common mistakes, don't write this down, is students do something like this. Well, that would only work if when you multiply two things together and the answer is six, that one of those had to be a six. And we've already seen that that's not true. So that doesn't work. So we do have to go through all of our steps. Step one says clear grouping symbol. So let's start distributing. So I have x squared plus three x minus two x minus six is equal to six. Next step says move everything to one side. But remember our basic rule before we move stuff around to an equation, we always want to combine any like terms that we can plus x minus six is equal to six. Then move everything to one side. Again, I'm gonna move it to the side that keeps our lead coefficient positive. And then I'm going to try to factor. Now this will actually factor. Again, for time's sake, I'm just gonna jump through and do this really quick. Now we can use that uh, zero factor property principle thing, right? We have things multiplied together equaling zero. It means one of these factors has to be equal to zero. All right, both of these nice and easy to solve. Just move the number to the other side. And there's the two answers that we were expecting. All right, so as you see, this works out uh, fairly nice, fairly easy with factoring. The problem is not everything factored. We're gonna take a look at one more example and then we're gonna, the next video, we're gonna take a look at what happens when things don't factor. So let's do one more here. What if I said, um, let's do x cubed. <coughs> Let's do plus x squared minus 12x is equal to zero. 
kind of almost the same one we just did. Actually, let's change this. Let's make that a uh, 20, so it's a little different. All right, so this is a polynomial equation. Now, notice this is not a quadratic, right? The highest power is not two, it's actually three. So technically, this is called a cubic. Uh, but uh, we still want to try to factor a polynomial equation. Remember, that's kind of our topic here. So polynomial equation, you do want to follow these steps. So let's see, clear grouping symbols, I don't have any. Move everything to one side, that's done. And then we want to factor. So first step in factoring was greatest common factor. They all have an x, so I can factor out an x. I'm like, x squared plus x minus 20 is equal to zero. All right, inside the parentheses, that'll factor some more. We can kind of do that shortcut inside there again. That's going to be x plus 5, x minus 4. All right, so here's where the idea that we, uh, our zero factor property thing, whatever you want to call it, just gets extended. Here we have three things multiplied together equaling zero. Still, one of those factors has to be equal to zero. So either x has to be zero, x plus 5 is zero, or x minus 4 has to be equal to zero. Now here we have three smaller equations to solve. There's uh, one's already solved. If we solve this one, we get x is negative 5. And over here, if we solve that, we get x is equal to 4. Now notice, this time we have three solutions. Uh, that's because our highest power is 3. A little bit later on, uh, down the line, we'll see that when we're solving polynomial equations, we should always expect the same number of solutions as the degree of the polynomial. All right, so our first two methods for solving quadratic uh, equations and or polynomial equations would be extracting the root, and then if you are solving a polynomial equation, you want to try to factor.